So we're just going to look at which quadrant um, theta is in. So which quadrant for theta? Okay. So if cos theta is greater than zero, now I might just put this in here too. It's all stations to Coffs Harbour. Uh, so if we look at this, cos theta is greater than zero. So where is cos positive? So cos is positive in quadrant one and two. That means theta could be either in one or two. Just thinking about what that means, like if you went cos of something in there, cos of anything in that quadrant, so 60, 45, you're always going to get a positive answer. Whereas if you did an angle in that fourth quadrant, like 300, um, for cos, you'll also get a positive answer. So that's where cos is positive. Okay, where is sine theta less than zero? Where's that going to be? So this is all stations to coughs. So sine is positive in one and two, so it's negative in three and four. That goes quadrant three and four. Say we have tan theta is less than zero and sine theta is greater than zero. So where is tan less than zero and where is sine greater than zero? So tan is less than zero, all stations to coughs. So it'll be quadrant two and quadrant three. Okay, um, that's where tan is negative. And where is sine positive or well, quadrant two and quadrant one? So where does this happen together? They both happen in quadrant two. Okay, so just look at another one. So sine theta is less than zero and cos theta is less than zero. Okay, so draw your circle, all stations to cos. So where is sine negative? So it's not in one or two, that's where it's positive. So it's three and four. And where is cos negative? Cos is negative two and three. So where do they happen together? They would happen in quadrant three.